Hi, everybody, and welcome to the great Northwest as the University of Iowa tries to rebound against last week's debacle against Penn State as they travel to the University of Oregon to take on the Ducks. Beautiful day, 65 degrees, a high of 80 is expected during the ball game. And yes, they even list a three mile an hour wind as Hayden Fry hoping his team gets back on track. Iowa wins the coin toss and so they will be moving from right to left and Oregon in their familiar green and gold kicks off. That is Belden hitting it to Tim Dwight at the goal line. 10, 15, and the little man's out short of the 20 yard line. First and 10 for Iowa, Ryan Driscoll is at quarterback along with Cedric Shaw and Kent Call. On the first play, Driscoll wants to throw, looks, has a lot of time, throws over the middle, and would you believe it, right off the bat, Molden of Oregon intercepts the pass. So the Ducks take over first and 10 at the 23. O'Neill is the quarterback, he's a good one. Wants to throw out into the flat to Wilcox. The big guy rambles inside the 20, the 15, and down to the 12-yard line. On the very next play, a little mix-up. O'Neill keeps himself, and he's pushed out of bounds at about the 10. Make it second and eight. O'Neill wants to throw complete down near the five-yard line to Johnson. Coates on the tackle for the Hawks. Make it third and four, ball at the six. Pitch back to Whittle, and he goes into the end zone. So the game gets off to a rocky start. Belden with the extra point, it is good, and Oregon simply had to go 23 yards. They did it in four plays, and they're on top. Oregon seven, and Iowa nothing. Belden the kickoff man again, hits it, and Tim Dwight again is deep. He takes it at the four, comes up, and again he is blasted right short of the 20. Woods the man doing the job on Tim Dwight there. First and 10 at the 20. Kent Cole, who will have a great football game, gets eight yards on the first down. Iowa takes a timeout at 12.48 of the first quarter. When they come back, it is second and two. Cedric Shaw gets the call over the right side. He gains 14 and picks up the first down. First and 10, ball at the 42. Kent Call gets the call, goes over the right side. Heavy traffic, he picks up five. Make it second and five, ball at the 47. Cedric Shaw, the second man through, gets the call over the left side and picks up four. Make it third and one now. Driscoll again to Shaw, same play. He only gets, uh, let's see, did he get one? No, they mark him down, so make it fourth and one from the 49. Shaw gets the call, same play, and he gets the first down. Three yards picked up on the play. First and 10 now, ball at the Oregon 48. Shaw tries the right side, but he's gonna be knocked down for a loss of six. Coda there for the stop for Oregon. Make it second and 16. Driscoll, draw play to call over midfield, over the 45, down to the 44. Third and eight from that point. Driscoll wants to throw, backs are flaring out, pressure, gets the ball away, but it's too tall. And misses Cedric Shaw, and so Iowa will have to punt the football away. That brings on Nick Gallery, standing uh, back near the 44, gets it away. Takes a bounce, is gonna be killed at the 10 yard line. By the way, that was a 29 yard punt. First and 10 for the Ducks. Trap play to Phil Yaw up the middle. Chris Webb is there to hold him to a gain of one. Second and nine for Oregon. O'Neill wants to throw. Now he rolls right, throwing for Wilcox, but it's incomplete. Make it third and nine. O'Neill straight back to pass, 
Now he's in trouble. There's Chris Webb. He is knocked down for a loss of 10. That brings up a fourth and 19. Oregon still leading seven to nothing. They have to punt out of their own end zone. Belden gets the snap, hits it. It is a 43 yard punt. Harold Jasper has it, tries to get to the 40, but he's gonna be knocked back. So he loses three on the punt return. First and 10, ball resting at the 46. Cedric Shaw gets the draw play, now jumps outside. He's at midfield and gonna be pulled down a gain of two. There was illegal uh, use of the hands by Iowa. That cost them 10 yards. Make it first and 19 now at the 39. Kent Call gets the call, terrific effort. He gains four. Second and 15 for Iowa. Driscoll, play fake up the middle, fools our camera for a moment. Now throws down the middle, there is Scott Slutsker. And he picks up 26 yards on the first down pass. First and 10 for Iowa, ball resting at the 31. Ball given off to Kent Call, left side. He gains two. Make it second and eight, ball resting at the 29. Driscoll with split backs, drop straight back, find Scott Slutsker, nice pass, 20. 15 and going to be knocked out down about looks like the uh, six yard line. Let's call it the five. I formation behind Driscoll given off to Cedric Shaw on the draw play. He picks up four down to the one. Ball given off again to Shaw. He bolts into the end zone and Iowa is within one point of tying this ball game up. 4-12 left to go in the first quarter. Extra point kick is blocked. So Brian Hurley has his extra point block. Drive was 54 yards. It took six plays, but Oregon still leads the uh, scoreboard 7-6. Brian Hurley kicks off for Iowa. It comes down to Wilcox. He bobbles it. Ball is free. And let's see, Oregon comes up with the football. First and 10, ball at the 18-yard line. O'Neill gives off to Whittle. He tries the left side. There is Chris Webb for the stop. Second and nine, ball right short of the 20-yard line. Malapay is given the ball. He gains three. Bobby Diaco, the first man for the black and gold there for the defensive stop. Third and six, ball at the 22. O'Neill fakes, little pressure, now throws, intended, they say, for Wilcox. It's incomplete. That brings on a punting situation. Belden in again to punt the football away for the University of Oregon. Of course, they're in the Pac-10 conference. Ball comes down to Harold Jasper. He has it. He's at the 40. He's at midfield. He's at the 40. 30, 25, 20. 10-5, touchdown. <laughs> 68-yard punt return. Iowa was penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct on the celebration. And would you believe the extra point try is blocked again. But Iowa does control the scoreboard now. Iowa 12, Oregon 7. Brian Hurley kicks off. It is short. Ball is going to be taken and brought back over midfield. Not sure what happened on that kickoff. First and 10, ball at the 44. O'Neill wants to throw. Now he scrambles. Now he's in trouble. Now he gets away, throws. The ball is incomplete, out of bounds. Second and 10, ball still at the 44. Ball given on the inside to Phil Yaw. He picks up short yardage. Parker Wildman there first off for Iowa. Make it third and nine. Ball at the 43. O'Neill drops back. Looks. Now flips out. Screen pass to Phil Yaw. He's at the 40. 30. 25. Down the sidelines. 29 yards on that pass play. First and 10. Ball at the 14. 
Pitch left to Phil Yaw. He gains nine before he's knocked out of bounds over there by Marquise Porter. Make it second and one. Ball given straight up the middle to Malape. Parker Wildman stops him for no gain. Third and one. Malape gets the call. He goes up the middle for three and a first down. First and goal from the two. Malape pitch back, but he's in trouble. He's going to be hit and loses three. Chris Webb on the stop as the first quarter comes to an end. Iowa leading 12 to 7 over Oregon. First play now of the second quarter, second and goal from the five. O'Neill throws all the way back across the field to Spence. It is good for the touchdown. Two-point conversion time. Iowa stops Malape, and the scoreboard is now Oregon's. 14.56 left to go before halftime. Oregon 13, Iowa 12. Right to left now, Belden kicks off for Oregon. Tavian Banks fumbles it, and it goes out of bounds. And oh my, Iowa starts off first and 10 at the six. Driscoll with a man in motion, gives off up the middle to Cedric Shaw. He's gonna be stopped after a gain of two. 14-15 left to go before halftime, second and eight at the eight. Driscoll fakes. Now wants to throw. Ball is almost intercepted, intended for Kent Call. That brings up a third and eight. Shaw gets the pitch. He only gains one on the play. So with 13 and a half minutes left before halftime, fourth and seven, Iowa has to punt the football. Nick Gallery from his own end zone. Hits it, 42-yard punt. O'Benny takes it, however, breaks free, 30, 25, still going and going to be knocked down short of the 20. 10-yard face mask is also assessed on Iowa. And so Oregon takes over first and 10 at the 11. Oregon options. Whittle gets the pitch along the right side. He picks up nine. Marquise Porter there on the defensive stop. Second and one from the two. Whittle again over the right side. Dives, touchdown. So with that great punt return and the face mask penalty, cheerleaders from Oregon have lots to cheer about. The extra point is up. It is good. And now Oregon jumps out 20 to 12 over Iowa. 12.41 left to go before halftime. One more time, Belden kicks off. Tavian Banks back. He's at the four, crosses the 10, 15, 20. Tries to crawl his way up to the 25. Gonna be down at about the 24. First and 10 for the Hawkeyes. Draw play. Given away to Shaw, he picks up five before he is stuffed short of the 30. Second and five for Iowa. From the 29, Driscoll gives away to Shaw again. He's out over the 35. He picks up eight and the first down. First and 10, ball resting at the 37. One more time, Shaw gets the call over the right side. Let's change that. That was Kent Call, and Call gets three on the draw play. Make it second and seven now. Ball is fumbled on the ground by Shaw, and let's see, Oregon comes up with it. 10.38 left to go in the first half. First and 10, Oregon at the 37. Man in motion. O'Neill at quarterback fakes. Now he wants to throw near sideline. Ball is incomplete to a wide open Spence. Second and 10, ball still resting at the 37. Phil Yaw gets the draw play on the inside and the big fella continues to pull his way for 15 before Bobby Diaco pulls him down. First down, Oregon, Hayden Fry concerned on the sideline, talking there to Tim Dwight. First and 10, ball now at the 22. O'Neill still at quarterback, eye formation behind him. 
Phil Yaw gets uh, the fake. Now O'Neill keeps it, and he goes inside close to the 10-yard line. First and 10, ball at the 11. Whittle tries the right side. He gains two. Fulhalla stops uh, Oregon for Iowa there. Second and eight now. Whittle gets the pitch, but he gains nothing. John LaFleur on the defensive stop. Make it third and eight, ball at the nine. O'Neill hands off to Whittle. He breaks tackle after tackle, barges through and scores. So with the extra point by Belden, it is good. And Oregon moves out to a 27 to 12 lead, 7.33 left to go before halftime. Time to get this train back on the tracks. It's kind of gone in the ditch. Belden kicks off. Tavian Banks at the 10. They say he touched a knee, so Iowa once again will take over deep in their own territory. Ball given away to Cedric Shaw on the inside. He's going to be knocked down after a gain of four by Jensen. Seven minutes left. Second and six at the 14. Driscoll pitches left to Shaw. Back to the 10. Over the 15. Over the 20. Over the 25. He gains 12. First and 10. Ball up at the 26. Again, the pitch to Shaw. But he's going to be knocked down and gain only one by a flock of ducks, if you'll excuse the expression. Second and nine at the 27. Ball given away to call on the delay. Over the right tackle, he gains three. Make it third and six now. The crowd gets into it from the 30. Driscoll looks, 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 throws, finds Anthony Dean on a diving catch. Great play, gains nine and a first down. 4.45 left to go, first half, first and 10. Ball at the 39. Call gets the give, and he has four tough yards. Make it second and six. Ball at the 43. Cedric Shaw inside, bounces outside, over the 45, up near the first down marker. Make it third and two. Ball resting at the 47. Driscoll rolls left. Finds Kent Call, makes a nice catch, escapes a tackle, and gets the first down. First and 10, ball now at the Oregon 46. Ball given away to Tavian Banks. He's going to be stopped by Coda for a gain of three. 2.45 left to go before halftime. Second and seven, ball at the 43. Driscoll fakes into the middle. Good protection, now throws, ball is... We will call it intended for Anthony Dean. Third and seven, ball at the 43. Driscoll again throws. The ball is complete to Cedric Shaw over the middle. Good for a first down. 2-10 now. Left to go before halftime. First and 10. Ball at the 34. Call. Gets the call, and he is knocked down hard. Loses two. Bailey there for Oregon. Second and 12, ball at the 36. Driscoll rolls right, throws, intended for Willie Guy and incomplete. Make it third and 12 now. Again, the Oregon crowds into it. Driscoll fakes, now throws. Ball is going to be juggled and incomplete, intended for a wide open Cedric Shaw. Fourth and 12, ball at the 36. Iowa goes for it. Driscoll in trouble, throws, ball intended for Harold Jasper, way out of bounds, and the Ducks will take over. First and 10, ball at the 36. O'Neill throws into the flat, incomplete, intended for Johnson. Second and 10, ball at the 36. Whittle gets the call, he loses two, Chris Webb on the defensive stop, Iowa takes a timeout to save the clock. Third and 12 now from the 34. Phil Yaw gets the call up the middle. He is really rocked by Bobby Diaco. Oregon takes a delay of game penalty to move it back. Now let's move to fourth and 11. 
Belden punts. Harold Jasper has the football at the 40. Moves up field. He's at the 45, 47. Time for one play. Three seconds left in the half. Driscoll drops straight back. Pretty good protection. Let's it go intended for Anthony Dean. Incomplete and the half ends with the Ducks on top. Welcome back to second half action. As you saw, Iowa totally owned the stats, but they don't own the scoreboard. So let's see if we can get something going in the second half. Hurley kicks off to Johnson. He returns it 27 yards before Bobby Coates knocks him down. First and 10, Oregon at the 29. O'Neill gives back to Whittle. He's over the 40. 45 midfield. Finally knocked out of bounds by Marquise Porter. First and 10 again for Oregon. They're at the 46. O'Neill all kinds of time. Now he's going to be in trouble. He throws and it's over the head of McLemore. Make it second and 10. Ball at the 46. O'Neill, the quarterback for Oregon. Gives back to field, y'all. He comes around the side and he's going to be tackled there by, uh, let's see, that's Chris Webb. That's great hustle, gain of five. Second and five from the 41. O'Neal rolls right. And he's gonna gain five. He picks up the first down. First and 10, ball at the 36. Draw to field yard. He breaks free and is gonna go down near the 10. A 25 yard rush. First and 10, ball at the 11, let's call it. Malapé bulls behind left guard, he gains four. Second and six from the seven. Phil Yaw gets the call, he gains one. John LaFleur on the tackle. Third and five, ball at the six. O'Neal wants to throw, screen play to Phil Yaw. 10, five, touchdown. So Oregon with 11.36 left to go in the third quarter, jumps out with the extra point to a 34 to 12 lead. And Iowa is quickly running out of time to get the thing turned around. Belden one more time, kicks off. Tavian Banks takes it. He's across the 20, 25, 30, slips down at the 33. First and 10 from that point for Iowa. Driscoll hands off to Cedric Shaw. He burst up the middle and gains a six before Coates knocks him down. Second and four from the 39. Ryan Driscoll fakes to the middle, great protection, throws. The ball is caught to a wide open Anthony Dean. He's inside the 30, 25, 20, and fumbles the football. Iowa first and 10 at the Oregon 17. Man in motion is Dean. Ball given off to Shaw. He burst up the middle and he gains seven. Make it second and three. Ball at the 10 now. Ball given away to Kent Cole. Look at this effort. Over the five. Almost into the end zone. He picks up, uh, let's say, nine. First and goal from the one. Call gets the call and he gets the touchdown. So that's more like it. Iowa may be getting back in the ball game. Now the Hawks decide to go for two. Fake, fake. Now rolling right, throwing for Scott Slutsker. Incomplete. The scoreboard now reads Oregon 34, Iowa 18, 934 left to go in the third quarter. Brian Hurley kicking off for Iowa. O'Benny takes it at the goal line. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, short of the 30. Tackled by Damian Robinson. First and 10 from the 29 now. O'Neal at quarterback. Wants to throw, does. There's Wilcox. And he's going to be tripped up by Damian Robinson. Gain of nine. Second and one from the 38, let's call it. Whittle gets the pitch. He's going to be knocked down after a four-yard gain and a first down. First and 10 for the Ducks. 
from the 42. Whittle tries the left side. Damian Robinson knocks him down after a gain of two. Second and eight, ball at the 44. O'Neal wants to throw, fires over the middle. It's incomplete, intended for Wilcox. Third and eight, ball at the 44. O'Neal, good protection, throws. It is caught, and then slipping down is Griffin. He gains 10 and a first down. Had he kept his feet, that might have gone a long way. First and 10 from the 46. Whittle tries the right side. He gains nine before he stopped. Second and one for Oregon at the 37. Whittle up the middle. He's going to be knocked down by Chris Webb for no gain. Third and one from the 37. Malape bulls for three yards and a first down. Again, Webb, the man to hit him there. First and 10 from the 34. Whittle. Right side, he's gonna lose one. George Bennett, the first man for Iowa there to stop him. Second and 11 from the 35. O'Neal straight back, lots of pressure. Throws it away, the ball is ruled caught and Iowa also is tagged with a 15 yard roughing the passer penalty. So Oregon sets up first and 10 at the 20. Malape gets the handoff. He burst up close to the 10 before John Hartley stacks him up. Second and one from the 11. Flags fly, play continues, and Phil Yaw goes over the right side, gains 10. They turn the penalty down, take the play, first and goal from the one. Phil Yeh bounces around the right side and goes in for the touchdown. Ducks go for two. O'Neal wants to throw, does it is incomplete. So the score is now Oregon 40, Iowa 18. Holy cow, with uh, just a few minutes left in the third quarter. Lots to celebrate in the Pacific Northwest. Iowa quickly running out of time. Belden kicks off Tim Dwight at the nine. He returns it up over the 25, an 18 yard return. First and 10 for the Hawkeyes. From the 27, Driscoll wants to throw. Throws, it is caught by Mark Russell. First down pass, Coda knocks Russell down. Up at the 48, it is first and 10. Driscoll still at quarterback. Looks, good protection, throws. There is Willie Guy running free, out of bounds, just about the 20. That was a 26-yard pass. First and 10, ball resting at the 22. Shaw gets the call, he gets two. Over the right side, down to the 20. Make it second and eight for Iowa. Driscoll with one back behind him, wants to throw. Wide open, no, covered well as Willie Guy incomplete and no flags. Make it third and eight for Iowa. Driscoll fakes to call, options right. That is to Cedric Shaw. He's blasted down after he gains four. So bring up fourth and four. Iowa needs lots of touchdowns and they will go for it. Driscoll wants to throw, does wide open on the far side was Dean but Driscoll overshot him. Hayden Fry obviously concerned about that lack of execution. 138 left to go, third quarter, first and 10 from the 16. Iowa jumps, no flags, pitch to Phil Yaw, he goes for one. Billy Coates there for Iowa on the stop. Second and nine from the 17. Malapay gets the call, goes for three. John LaFleur on the stop. Make it third and six from the 20. O'Neal wants to throw, looks for Spence off his hands and incomplete, and Oregon will have to punt the football away. Belden does the honors, hits it. 33-yard punt, gathered in by Harold Jasper, straight up the middle, and he gains 11 to set the Hawkeyes up in good position at the Oregon 42. First and 10 from that point. Tim Dwight flanked to the right. Ryan Driscoll wants to throw. Throws long into the end zone. Tim Dwight incomplete. 
Have an idea you might see a lot of that from Tim Dwight this year, streaking down the sidelines with that great speed. Second and 10, call. Goes over the left side, he gains 11. First down on the rush as we end the third quarter, 40-18, Oregon over Iowa. 15 minutes left to go for Iowa to get something going. From the 31, first and 10, draw to Banks, he loses two. Second and 12, ball back at the 33. Driscoll wants to throw, hits Tavian Banks, but oh my, Jackson makes an outstanding tackle. Make it third and 11 after a timeout from the 32. Driscoll wants to throw. Oh my goodness, Cedric Shaw simply dropped the football right in his hands. Iowa needs points, so they'll go for it. Fourth and 11, Driscoll wants to throw. The ball is to Scott Slutsker, but he is short of the first down. So Oregon takes over with 13.25 left to go in the game. First and 10 at the 24. Stewart gets the call straight up the middle, gains nine, Pat Boone on the tackle. Second and one from the 33. Over the right side is Malape. He gains 11 and the first down. First and 10 from the 44. Stewart, no gain. Parker Wildman on the stop. Make it second and 10 now from the 44. Man in motion. Phil Yaw gets the call. He tries the left side. Flags fly. You saw that he gained five, but there was illegal motion. So make it second and 15. Oregon retaining the football at the 39. O'Neill wants to throw. Now he scrambles. Now he's going to be knocked down by Parker Wildman for no gain. Third and 15. Ball at the 39. O'Neill. Straight back, throws. Ball is too tall for everybody, intended for Ricketts. Fourth and 15, Oregon will have to punt the football. Belden hits it, it is a 37 yard punt. It goes to Harold Jasper and he returns it for five. However, there was a penalty of 10 yards. The Hawkeyes were called for an illegal block. So with 10-22 left to go in the ball game, first and 10, ball at the 19. Twin backs behind Driscoll. Fake, now he wants to throw to the near sidelines. It is behind Cedric Shaw and incomplete. Second and 10 now, ball at the 19. Driscoll again wants to throw, intended for Harold Jasper, and again, it is incomplete. Third and 10 for Iowa from the 19. Driscoll wants to throw. The ball is deflected off the hands of Jasper and falls to the turf. So Nick Gallery has to punt. 38 yard punt taken by Johnson. He breaks free, keeps his balance, spins, and he is going to gain 17 before he is run out of bounds by Nick Gallery. First and 10 for the Ducks from the 40. Phil Yaw inside trap, games three. Bobby Diaco on the tackle. Second and seven, ball at the 37. O'Neill, look at this move. Now he scrambles, runs into his own man. He gains one before Wildman knocks him down. Third and six, ball at the 36. O'Neill wants to throw, nice protection. Throw sidearm intended for Ricketts, but it's incomplete. So the battle of the punters continues. Belden, high snap, pulls it down, almost block. It goes into the end zone for the touchback. 8-12 left to go in the ball game. First and 10 from the 20. Driscoll wants to throw, far sideline. Scott Slutsker has it, gain of five. Wheaton on the tackle. Second and five now from the 25. Driscoll throws, far sidelines complete to Jasper for the first down pass. First and 10 now, 7.35 left to go in the ball game from the 32. Driscoll wants to throw Kent Call out of the backfield. He catches it, breaks two tackles, and jumps out over the 40. What a nice play. Gain of 10 on the uh, reception. First and 10, 7.20 left to go from the 42. Driscoll incomplete on the far side intended for Harold Jasper. 
Make it second and 10 from the 42. Driscoll straight back, throws this sideline way too tall for Kent Call. 7.15 left to go in the contest. Crowd into it, third and 10 from the 42. Driscoll looks left, now throws deep to the right. There is Willie Guy, it is intercepted. Coda has it, he brings it back short of the 40. However, there are flags down. The officials say it is roughing the passer against Oregon. So Iowa maintains control of the football. 7.02 left to go, first and 10 from the Oregon 42. Cedric Shaw on the carry to the right side, he gains three. Second and seven, ball at the 39. Ball given away, first man Kent Call, 35, 30, down to the 29, he picks up 10. 5.59 left to go in the ball game, first and 10, ball at the 29. Kent Call gets another shot, but he loses one. Asher, the first man there for Oregon. Second and 11, ball at the 30. Driscoll throws, beautiful catch by Anthony Dean. 13 yards and the first down. First and 10 from the 17. Cedric Shaw gets the pitch, but oh my, he is stacked up. He loses two. Iowa takes a timeout. 5.20 left to go. It is second and 12. Let's resume play. Ball at the 19. Coda blitzes. Driscoll just throws the ball up. It is intercepted by Sherman. Oh my, what kind of play do you call that? 5.14 left to go in the ball game. First and 10 from the 21. Feel y'all. Goes left side. He's knocked down after he gains four. 4.38 left to go. Third, or let's call it second and six from the 25. Ball given off on the inside to Phil Yaw, and Fuhala makes the tackle. Loss of one. Four minutes to go in the contest. Third and seven. Grizzani rolls right and throws to Johnson. That's a gain of eight and a first down. First and 10 from the 32. Stewart, the lone back behind Grizzani. Ball is given off and he's stacked up on the right side for a gain of one. 3.20 left to go in the game. Second and nine from the 33. Jones pops inside, he gains six. Wildman on the stop. Third and three now, ball at the 39. Stewart is stuffed by Fahala for a loss of four. So Oregon trying to run out the clock. We'll have to punt the football away. Belden hits it to Jasper, 43-yard punt. He falls down. 153 left to go in the ball game. First and 10 at the 22. Driscoll audibleizing at the line. Gives the pitch back to Cedric Shaw. He's at the 20. 25-30, down the far sideline, he gains 12. 145 left to go in the game. Driscoll wants to throw, he does. It is complete to Harold Jasper out near midfield. Another first down. First and 10 from the 49. Driscoll to Jasper, ball is incomplete. 135 left to go in the game, second down. Driscoll again wants to throw, scrambles a little bit, throws for Dean, and it is way short. Third and 10, ball at the 49. Driscoll throws, it is complete to Cedric Shaw, but he's gonna be knocked down. Iowa is called for a 15 yard pass interference penalty. So make it third and 25, Driscoll throws, it is complete beautifully to Scott Slutsker, 27 yards and a first down. 52 seconds to go. First and 10 from the 39, draw play. To Kent Call, big fella goes for 11 inside the 30. 35 seconds left on the clock. First and 10 at the 28. Driscoll wants to throw, intended for Rod Filer. Ball bounces in the air. It is picked off by Jelks, and that should do it. Time for one more play. Oregon runs it up the middle, and time runs out as the Hawkeyes lose another tough one. The final was Oregon 40, Iowa 18. Time to take a look at the stats and then go to the locker room and hear what the Hawkeyes have to say.
Well, the team, they're down, you know, as, as anybody would be, you know, after a loss like this. You know, we ain't never expect to lose, you know, a game. So, uh, I think we'll bounce back, though, you know. We got a, got a lot of guys on the team with a lot of character, you know, and um, they won't quit. And we got a lot of good leaders, you know, and we won't, we won't quit, and they won't let the rest of the team quit. So, we'll try to, you know, go back to practice and clean up the mistakes, you know, and hopefully we'll get better against Michigan. I can't speak for everybody else. Um, I'm down right now. Uh, I'm very upset. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to work hard, because I am. I mean, I'm not a quitter, and I don't think anybody else that I'm affiliated with is a quitter. Bobby, this was an Oregon team that really had some trouble running the ball, and yet had some success today, especially in the second half. What do you think that was? Well, I just think uh, Oregon is they're a good football team, and uh, they came out and wanted to win more than the Hawks wanted to win today. And uh, we got beat. Was there any carryover effect from last week's game at Penn State? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. You put, try and put each game behind you and focus on the next game, and we just got beat today by a good team. By a good team. The defense blaming itself for uh, this game? <laughs> no, I don't. I can't speak for the whole defense. You know, I, I come down hard on myself after every loss and after every win. I can't speak for everybody else. I could just speak for myself. You know, I got to check myself, and that's all I can do. I hope everybody else does the same. I really think we just need to regroup and just realize, you know, what's going on, what's happening around us right now. You know, we're facing adversity. We can't, you know, fold our ten and just give in. You know, we got to bounce back. We got to come together as a family. We got to, you know, get things going right on the right track again. As a senior, like, uh, how do you think you're going to have to, what are you going to have to do this week to kind of get these guys going, some of these younger guys? I just really think, you know, we just need to talk amongst each other and just realize that, you know, there's not going to be one guy on the field that's going to change the whole atmosphere that's happening out there. It's got to be everybody come within themselves and look, at, look in the mirror at themselves and decide that they're going to make a difference on the team. And then you have all 11 guys out there saying, I'm going to make a difference, then there'd be different makers out there. Just generally, what do you think happened out there today I, I, against a team that, that maybe on paper you guys are better than them? Just what happened? You know, they, they, they took advantage of our mistakes, and we just made too many mistakes today, and they took advantage of them. Well, I think the main thing we got to do is uh, just uh, see on film what we did wrong and just correct the mistakes. That's the main thing. Um, correcting the mistakes is the main thing. Um, playing hard, I think, is the key. Um, if we're playing hard as a team, uh, the mistakes will go away because um, somebody covers somebody's back and somebody covers somebody else's back. So I guess the main thing is just correcting mistakes, getting motivated for the next game, and just pushing through. What do you think happened out there generally today? This was a team that, you know, a lot of people thought you guys would have beaten. What went wrong? Um, I don't think it was a matter of what went wrong. I think just nothing went right. Um, I think uh, we really didn't play real hard. Uh, we didn't do our assignments the way we should have, um, which are things that, like Coach Fry says, are correctable. But um, the thing that, uh, that can't be corrected is whether you play hard or not. I don't think we play hard at all. Uh, is this the kind of game that you just sort of chalk it off as one of those, just one of those days and you just move on? Or, uh, and do you think that's possible going against a team like Michigan a week later? Well, it's, it's hard when you lose to just, to just put it behind you. But I think in football, you, you learn to put things behind you eventually because if you don't, then you'd be living in the past and it'd be hard to move on to the next game because you'd be thinking about the other game. Uh, I think the main thing is, you know, we'll soak for a while and uh, we'll watch the film on Monday, but after that, the game will be in the past and we'll move on to Michigan.